This is Jonathan Agar, Fear for Pro Boxing fans. We're up here in Leeds. March 26th, Martinez Warrington rematch for the world title. Uh, Eddie, uh, if someone said to you that the featherweight division would be like this a year ago, I don't think anyone would have believed this. Just talk us through how you've seen the division change. It's just unbelievable. I mean, look, when we signed Josh Warrington, we had a fight with Kanzu. Uh, at Headingley, everything was perfect, and then the pandemic kicked in. We couldn't do uh, a fight in front of fans. That fight fell through. Because we'd waited so long, the mandatory was due with Kid Galahad. Josh said, look, can we delay the Kanzu fight? Let's just have a run out, and then we'll fight Kanzu. We said, okay. As we know now, the run out was Maurizio Lara. That didn't go down very well. Got beat, came back, rematched him at Headingley. Galahad won the world title. Galahad got knocked out by Kiko Martinez. Kiko Martinez turned around and said, I want, I want to rematch Josh Warrington. I think I beat him last time, and I'll knock him out this time. And Josh Warrington got the call and was like, all right, you know, chance for him to become a two, two-time world champion. Sold 7,000 tickets in the first two hours here today. Just going to be a, a massive night. And someone's career probably comes to an end on March 26th because I think Kiko and Warrington are two elite fighters that want to be at the top of the sport. And you know, I'm not sure if either of them will come back from defeat. And for Josh, it's a massive moment to open up big unification fights in the division. I think there's a bit of a feeling online that when it comes to Maurizio Lara fight that Josh doesn't want the trilogy. Mm. But speak to him there. Oh, he did mate. say that he wanted this. He uh, was devastated. Yeah, after, fight. Well, when that fight ended in a draw, he was devastated because all he wanted to do was put that right. So his instruction to me was, I'll fight him again, no problem. You know, I want a big fight in America, see if you can get Santa Cruz. If not, I'll fight Lara. That's what we were doing. And then this came up, and he, he can't turn this down. You know, it's impossible. Like, also, this isn't... When, we, when, this, when he beat Galahad, I never for one moment thought, oh, K uh, Kiko against Josh Warrington. Kiko called this out. And even when I asked Josh Warrington, he was like, wow, okay. I didn't know that was possible. Um, but, you know, I, I think that some people are very brave, aren't they? You know, like online and stuff like that. Like, I, if I was Josh Warrington, I fucking wouldn't take the Maurizio Lara fight. But he wants to put it right. You heard him say up there, I want it because I want to have beaten all the people that I've ever lost to. So, and by the way, maybe that's a first defence. You know, maybe that's a, but, but that's a, you know. It's a dangerous fight, and I'm just, I, the good thing about having me on your team is I can look at it with a little bit more common sense, because these kids look at it with no common sense, yeah? Josh Warrington, common sense is out the window. He's a fighter. Anthony Joshua, same thing. No common sense. Um, no, I got beat. I want to go in there and rematch. There's never been one fighter, really, that gets beat that don't want to go in and really rematch that guy, unless it's a, like a, you know, a fucking career-ended defeat. They all want to get back in. But you've got to sometimes think smart. In this situation, it's irrelevant anyway. Because he, we got an opportunity from, from the gods, and he's got to go and win this fight against Kiko. I want to move on to Maxi Hughes now. Yeah. Before that last fight, he was working full-time, I believe. Yeah. And now he's IBO champion and he's uh, full-time boxer. It's yeah. been some story for him. Um, what, what would be the plan for him if he wins this fight against... Uh, it's a Wolf? great story. Great lad. You know, um, Maxi's kind of like bubbling around waiting for that life-changing phone call. You know, Michael McKinson got it recently. You know, it comes through improving your ranking through making noise through good performances from good profile and it will come for Maxi but now he mustn't slip up and it's a really dangerous fight against Ryan Walsh because he's a very good fighter you know, got big support himself and uh, it's, it's a really good fight Eb Ebony Bridges fighting yeah. for the world title is a natural fight for her the winner of the fight between Jamie Mitchell and uh, Skelly, Skelly. Yeah. So that's a good fight as well I mean a tough fight for Ebony like Roman is probably the best in the division um Punches hard, great work rate, great engine. But Ebony can punch as well. She's super tough. But, you know, you've got Shannon Courtney supposed to fight the winner of uh, um, Skelly and Mitchell. But then you've got the winner of this fight could unify against the winner of that fight. So it's a red-hot division and a massive chance for Ebony in Leeds. But she's going to be right up against it. Is that the plan for Shannon to go straight into a rematch? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, look, she'll be back probably May or June. 
um, she wants to, uh, to win her world title back and you know she could be fighting Ebony Bridges for a world title that's a massive fight or she could be rematching Jamie Mitchell she could, might be fighting Carly Skelly you know so we'll have to see but it's a very exciting times in the division for, for female boxing and in terms of prospects in your stable do Dalton Smith and Hopi Price yeah. uh, rank right at the top right up there I mean Dalton I think is a brilliant fighter and Hopi as well you know I said in the press comments he used to look at Hopi and think you look about 12 you know now he's starting to look like a man he believes in himself I just had a conversation there where he said to me get me a big fight for Leeds and I said yeah no. he said I'm ready mate he said I'm, I'm flying in the gym he boxes Ali Pali March uh, Feb 12th and then we want to find a really good opponent for him uh, in Leeds on uh, March 26th ok um, just quickly on the Tyson Fury Dylan mm. White situation we're expecting purse bids tonight 6pm uh, is that what's going to happen I think so yeah I mean there's always a phone call at the death um, but it is now 2pm as we have this conversation so we've got four hours uh, there'll be a phone call but I think I think it's almost certain we'll go to purse bids later today I can't think of a purse bid with this much anticipation in years <laughs> but uh, do you go into this purse bid thinking you're going to win it because there's going to be a lot of competition it's difficult expect. when you've got when you're up against a fighter who's got 80% at the moment of the pot you can manipulate the bid and just to explain that what I mean is if you agree a price with Tyson Fury you can overbid that price and you only have to pay 20% of the excess if that makes sense you can't do that when you're on the other end do you know what I mean but I don't know whether Fury would agree to that anyway so I've no idea I've, we'll, we'll be as competitive as we can be and it'll be a a big move for us to be able to, to promote that fight and promote Tyson Fury so we shall see Is there any movement on that 80-20 split? There will be I believe but not before the bid this evening mm, Okay I uh, just want to pick up on something Mike Coppinger reported yesterday that there was a close to a step aside deal but it fell through at the 11th hour is that correct? Uh, it fell through a uh, few reasons but the main reason was because Tyson Fury refused to go straight into an Usyk fight you know, for us, the model which was always discussed was if we do this, Fury fights Usyk, AJ fights the winner, originally for Undisputed, but to basically determine who the best heavyweight in the world is. What we don't agree with is Fury wanting an, an interim fight, which he wanted on March 26th with a, a, like a 10 rounder or whatever he wanted and then go in because we don't believe the time scale will happen because that was a concern in the first place so now it's all irrelevant it looks like he's fighting Dillian White but that's the reason really that it fell through and, and we we're all willing to go to long form agreement to have a look if everything that we wanted was taken care of in that contract but didn't reach that stage and how would you see a Fury White fight playing out very dangerous for Tyson Fury especially after all this because sometimes you know you lose that opportunity he could have fought for undisputed then he could have fought Asia instead he's fighting Dillian White for much less money in a really tough fight and Dillian will fancy it really fancies it so we'll see last one any update on Joshua Buatzi's next move uh, he'll be out looks like April I uh, was with him last week and looking for a, a big fight everybody wants to fight for the world title you know Callum Smith Joshua Buatzi Craig Richards I mean even on the other side Yard and uh, Callum Johnson but if we can't do that we should try and make those guys fight off domestically so Connor Ben Hooker close uh, yeah good good conversations it's, it's probably the fight I'm most interested to make for Connor I think it's a brilliant fight and hopefully we can get that over the line. I really appreciate your time. Cheers,